Welcome to Insights in History. My name is Marilyn Thompson, and I'm the Marketing Director here at the History Museum. I want to thank the presenting sponsor of Insights in History, Tuesley Hall Canopa. Their generous support helps make this program possible. Now in its 18th year, Insights in History has presented over 400 new programs to audiences like you. This month, we're very proud to welcome a longtime friend of the History Museum and the director of the Northern Regional Office of Indiana Landmarks, Todd Zeiger. Hello, and hey, thanks for joining us today. Marilyn, thank you for the opportunity in the History Museum to uh, let me come around here and show you a few of my favorite hidden gems in the area. Uh, we really appreciate it. So Indiana Landmarks works all around the state, and we try and find these hidden gems to save them and work with folks to you know, revitalize the community and connect folks to their heritage and save those places that are meaningful to them. As I thought about this challenge that uh, Marilyn posed to me of showing some hidden gems, I had to thinking really about maybe a bigger meaning behind that. Sometimes the gems are hidden right in plain view and it takes some work, but they are re-exposed and we rediscover them. So maybe that's like this opera house in Delphi, Indiana, Right on the square, there it is, not necessarily hidden from view, but it's architectural character hidden, certainly behind years of change and maybe not so good uh, care. And then after it's restored, there it is again, now a gem on its square, its auditorium on the third floor restored, uh, no longer hidden and now used as part of the community. Or maybe it's a building like Lyle Station down in Evansville, Indiana, certainly uh, worse to wear, but the last African-American, uh, the building for this African-American settlement down near Evansville, Indiana, needing to be saved for that important history uh, hidden down in kind of northern, uh, the southern part of the state. Um, but after it's restored, really amazing gem that it is today, a testament to the history of that settlement uh, and used for a community center and as a museum and telling the story of that area. Nearby in downtown, you know, the Gray House Station, not hidden from view right downtown, but it's architectural character and the amazing life uh, that the neon brought to the downtown uh, was, was long gone. So now restored as a restaurant. You know, our own headquarters is somewhat uh, along the story as well, right near the interstate in downtown Evansville, uh, restored and now open as part of our uh, headquarters and a uh, um, place to meet and have weddings, uh, a real gem in downtown Indianapolis. So I took that thought, and really what started this idea about hidden gems was the work here in South Bend to, to shine a light on a building that maybe some folks know but haven't seen for years or didn't even know existed, the Walker Field Shelter House uh, near Rum Village in South Bend, a wonderful WPA-era building uh, built in 1938. Uh, here it is, the, the stone masonry along uh, Erskine Boulevard there, Ewing, uh, just west uh, of, of downtown. Uh, here's an image of the court of the main part here where the waiting pool is located. Um, you know, hand built by the WPA. It's kind of lost over there by Rum Village, looked past, hidden in plain view, and hopefully one that over time we can be working to restore in partnership with the commission uh, here in South Bend and others. Here's a side view of that building uh, out there. Many of us know it, but have we thought about it for years? The old Studebaker sign in, in um, Bendix Woods, uh, Maple Surf Festival time makes us think about the Studebaker sign, but it's really a remarkable thing. It's only visible from the air, so it's kind of hidden in plain view. It's a half a mile long stand of pine trees that are uh, spell out the word Studebaker, designed in 1938, so really the same year as the shelter house. Um, it stood near the company's proving grounds. Uh, if you've not been out there lately, I'd encourage you to go revisit that site, that gem we have in our community, uh, and remember uh, that history. Also planted by the Civilian Conservation Corps, all those pine trees to spell out Studebaker, an amazing gem right here in our community. I'm going to go a little further afield, though, and kind of encourage you to think about our area a little broader and kind of regionally, in a sense. Uh, some of you may not be aware of the Kreider Gardens uh, over in Middlebury, Indiana. Uh, Vernon Kreider created one of these, the chief industries in Middlebury through the nursery and the mail order business that he had. Uh, and it was so big that the post office was enlarged to accommodate their sales. That's a pretty remarkable accomplishment. 
but he built this elaborate garden at the 1933 Chicago World's Fair. And I'm going to tie back to that towards the end of these uh, slides for another project that was part of the World's Fair as well. But here we have in Middlebury, this Crider garden, uh, these wonderful fanciful mushrooms uh, that are there. So built to the fair in 1933, it was moved back and put on display in Middlebury after the fair. And now it's a community park. Here's a, a, an image of the Crider Gardens uh, magazine. Uh, kind of fun to see that. Uh, some images of another garden though, further south from us, kind of similar in its feel, the Huntington Sunken Gardens uh, in Huntington, Indiana. A remarkable place, and I encourage you to go and visit it uh, when the weather is nice uh, to see this remarkable garden. You can see here the stonework, similar to the Walker Shelter um, in its application, similar in its era. Uh, but here it is in its uh, wonderful blooming state during the nice weather, uh, the sunken gardens down there. It's really a favorite among residents and romantic couples, a uh, result of an early 20th century abandoned stone quarry that was converted to the gardens. Um, and so it's a really a wonderful place. Chicago Lands Co Company transformed it into a garden in 1929. Uh, it's undergone a wonderful restoration in, in the last few years and certainly worthy of your visit, either going over to the Crider Gardens in Middlebury or the Sunken Gardens in Huntington, Indiana. A little bit closer to home though, and tying back to the 1933 fair, uh, is a place that I'm surprised that many people don't know about. And so I wanted to highlight this part of our brief tour today. And that's over the Indiana Dunes National Park, just 45 minutes east, west of the South Bend, is a remarkable national park that you can take a journey through about 150 years of work of architecture. It's stunning to be able to do that in one park where you can tra traverse an area from logs of the 1850s, the mid 19th century through to modern houses from the 1950s and 1960s and all of the styles in between. And I'll give you an opportunity to sign up for a tour we'll have about that in the future. But if we think about that, right within the drive of South Bend is hidden in plain view, an amazing gem of, architectural to of architecture uh, right there at the Indiana News National Park. So the image I have up here is the National Historic Landmark Bailey Homestead. Uh, this is a remarkable house, uh, one of the highest recognized properties uh, that you can get on the National Register, uh, a house that has many layers of history uh, that's fun to unpack in, in, over there at the Indiana Dunes National Park. So going from one extreme, the 1850s, to the other extreme, the 1950s, and this little lustron house uh, over there at the dunes that we actually were a part of moving uh, over to a different location because it was in, in danger of being demolished. A little uh, prefab house put together uh, from 3,000 pieces of porcelain and enamel steel, uh, these little lustron houses over there. And in between properties like this uh, Nelson Farmstead, a little cottage uh, that in its inside of the main house has a log structure that was then enlarged uh, and made bigger uh, over time. But what I want to focus on as part of my talk here today is a is a gem that many people don't understand the history about, and that's the Century of Progress district that's over there. So in 1933, there was the Century of Progress uh, Fair in Chicago, uh, and the little arrow there shows you where these houses that I'm gonna show you here were first constructed during that 1933-34 fair, right along the lakefront. After the fair, there was a, a, a place being constructed near Beverly Shores called Beverly Shores by a developer and he thought, wow, what a great way to get our uh, development going then buy some properties from the fair and move them over. And that's exactly what he did. He bought a number of properties, moved them over to kind of start his, his development there in Beverly Shores. Here's an image of a couple of the houses being moved. And they included some really fanciful buildings like a Cypress house uh, shown here. Um, he moved also the Florida Tropical House. Uh, here's an image from the fair itself. Uh, and here is an image of the Florida house uh, after it's been restored. On the inside, um, the amazing aluminum stair. So if you can imagine driving along the lakefront there at the Indiana Dunes National Park and finding this pink stucco house uh, right along the lake, it looks like something that could be right down there in Florida. And in fact, that's who built it was the state of Florida at the fair. Included the Rostone house, this uh, man-made material of almost concrete 
Uh, and here is an image of it today along the lake. Right along Lake Michigan, you see the wonderful waters of the lake uh, to the left there in this image. And a property we're currently working to restore, the House of Tomorrow. Uh, here is an image of it was uh, currently this last fall. Uh, has lost some of its amazing architectural style. So I thought I'd show you a couple of pictures of what it first looked like. A duodecagon. Here's a couple of images. But it was based off of an octagon house up in Wisconsin. And so the architect thought that he could build a modern version of that octagon house using steel and a, essentially an open wall system to let him build his exterior walls of glass. So this is a house that you can go and take a look at from the outside. It doesn't look like this today, but one that we're working on restoring uh, to back to its original glory. A lot of people are fascinated by this property. It actually has an airplane hangar. Uh, at the time, uh, the, the architect, George Fred Keck, thought we would all have airplanes to fly around in. And so here's an image of what that airplane looked like at the fair. And here it is today. Uh, I'd encourage you to go and check out that Century of Progress right along Lakefront Drive uh, in, in the Indiana Dunes National Park. You can glad to reach out to me with any questions. You can sign up for our future talks at uh, indianalandmarks.org. Uh, or if you have a question, my uh, email address is located down below there, tziger at indianalandmarks.org. Hey, thanks for checking in today. Hope you enjoyed seeing a few of those images and seeing a few hidden gems in and around South Bend and the state of Indiana. Thank you very much.